What's up, y'all? If you don't already know, my name is Styx, and these are my top seven cars from Ferrari Fest 2024, starting with the Lamborghini Revelto. This is the most powerful Lamborghini ever produced to this day, but the reason why I like it so much is because it's so basic. They didn't try to do too much. There's no giant rear spoiler. There's no big rear diffuser or no weird splitter. I mean, honestly, this car looks like a rocket ship and I'm pretty sure it drives like one too. Now, my favorite part of this car is ultimately the rear pipes. I mean, they kind of look like jet engines to me, but definitely one of my top cars from Ferrari Fest. The Jaguar XJ220, man. Now, this is probably one of the rarest supercars that you can find, and the reason being is because only 282 of these cars was produced. Now, this car was able to reach the top speed of 217 miles an hour when you removed the catalytic converters, and again, that was in the 90s. That's just to tell you how powerful of a car Jaguar was trying to create. So what ultimately killed Jaguar's one and only attempt at the supercar category? Well, in the 90s, the world went into a global recession, and with a 472,000 pound price tag, it was just impossible to sell. The next thing that killed it was in fact Jaguar themselves, because they advertised it as a V12, but when they delivered the car to consumers, they delivered a turbocharged V6. And V6s just don't sound like V12s. The Shelby Cobra. Now, the first time I ever seen this car was in the Bad Boys movie. And literally the second I saw this car, I fell in love with it. As soon as he pulled it off the trailer, I felt like if you had that car, you was that man, you was that guy. Plus he was a pretty good bad guy. This will ultimately go down as one of my favorite cars in history. And this one was in impeccable condition. Definitely one of my top cars. The 3000 GT all-wheel drive twin turbo VR4 by Mitsubishi. Now, if you don't know, I actually drive a Mitsubishi myself. So of course, this car made it into my top countdown. But the main reason why I put this car in the countdown is because the interior looked like this car hasn't even been driven by the owner. Love this car. Lamborghini Murcielago. Listen. I feel like the Murcielago and the Diablo is two of the most forgotten about Lamborghinis, but two of the best designed Lamborghinis in the world to me. Everybody's, you know, Aventador crazy now. Everybody's just psycho about the Aventador and the Aventador went up in value. Personally, I would take this Murcielago in orange any day, any day. The Lamborghini Countach, easily one of the most recognizable and iconic Lamborghinis in the world. Now, if you haven't seen Jackie Chan's Rumble in the Bronx, which is this, or if you haven't seen Leonardo DiCaprio's Wolf of Wall Street, which is this, for some apparent reason, Hollywood just loves destroying these cars. I don't know why, but they love doing it. Now, three quick facts about the Lamborghini Countach. One, if it has a front bumper on it, then it's the American version. If it doesn't have a front bumper, number two, then it was bought overseas and imported over here to America because you gotta have a crash bar as part of the American safety inspections. And number three, the Lamborghini Countach from the movie Wolf of Wall Street just recently sold for $1.2 million in that condition right there. This is the big dog, the Ferrari F40. This car comes with a $2.3 million price tag and it's honestly amazing how I was actually able to see it in person. I've never even been this close to a car this expensive before in my life. And the crazy part about it is I actually got even closer. But just based on the look of the car alone is the reason why it's number one, because this car is perfectly designed. And I really wish Ferrari would have kept going with this design, but I guess discontinuing it is what made it more valuable. Make sure you hit the subscribe button because I'm going to upload the full walkthrough of all the cars at 2024 Ferrari Fest.